Just moments from now, Gil Mesh is going to bring his stuff to try and baffle these hitters. The tradition of Sunday Night Baseball. Welcome, everybody, 2K Sports on Major League Baseball. Starting pitcher, John Danks. And Steve, uh, as you take a look at this Kansas City lineup, what do you think we're going to see? As a hitter, when you face John Danks, you have to be patient. You know he's a guy that wants to expand the zone, but he'll give up a walk and he'll give up a home run. So hitters' counts are critical. Work the count, get that 2-0 pitch, that 3-1 pitch, and then sit on the fastball and look to drive it. Sponsored by Pepsi, we'll see what Trey Hillman's offense looks like. Scouting Big John, who are we uh, looking at today? Well, Rick Ankiel is a special one. And how special? There's not many pitchers in the history of baseball that can come up to the big leagues as a pitcher and then turn themselves into an everyday position player outfielder and still produce. He has a great bat. You have to remember, he's still learning. Well, let's see if some of the things he's learning can do some damage today. And for sudden batting as we get ready to get things going. Left fielder, number 22, Scott Hudsednik. Here's the pitch. Cutter just misses. 1 and 0. Oh. This cut fastball is a very effective pitch for this guy because it allows him to set up all of his other pitches. Swings and misses at the fastball. That'll leave in the count at 1. Good pitch on the outside corner. 1 and 2. Well, if he can throw this cutter down and away like this, he's going to be very effective. That's an outstanding pitch. Oh. Slider, tough to lay off, and it's 2 2. Big swing and a miss on a heater. Strike him out, one down. With two strikes, the hitter wanted the fastball. He got it, but didn't do anything with it. Diaspo at the plate. Well, for a team like the Kansas City Royals, who struggled mightily again in 2009 as far as wins and losses go, Alberto Cayaspo had to be a very bright spot in their season. He stole only two bases, but he hit 41 doubles, and he scored 79 runs. He has a lot to build on for 2010. And the uh, first pitch was a strike. Got about 0-1 right now. Cayaspo likes to take advantage of that Royals ballpark. It's got some pretty big gaps in it. And he's got enough speed so that he can turn uh, singles into doubles in his own home yard. Oh, 41 doubles, eight triples, and that's a great sign. With that speed, though, you wonder why he only steals two bases. I think he needs to work on that a lot more going into this season because he can be an effective offensive weapon if he can steal bases. Well, K Cam's going to show us this 12 6 curve. Let's get a better look. Base is empty with two outs. Danks gets set and Whoa. delivers. They set up away. Cutter misses. 1 0. The 1 0 pitch. 1 0 pitch. Change up in there. 1 and 1. What an outstanding pitch. Changing speeds, hitting your spots. Throw that change up away. Swing and a miss on that fastball, and it's one and two. Shot towards the hole, and that's going to do it. Canerco's there. But John Danks gets some free up, three down. He gets through the first inning without allowing a hit. And the White Sox, their first chance is coming. And it'll be Gil Mesh doing the pitching for Kansas City. He'll be starting. And uh, as he looks at this White Sox lineup, what are they going to see from him today? Well, with Gil Mesh out on the mound, the hitters have to know he's got a, an assortment of pitches that he can throw at any time in the count. Nothing's overpowering, although his fastball can touch 95. It doesn't have great movement. You have to sit on the fastball, adjust to the secondary pitches, and force him to throw strikes. And this is hit in the air, foul down the left field line. Tried to track that one down, but comes up empty. Oh and one mesh kicks and delivers. Line drive. Play is made. Number ten. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. On 2009, the Kansas City Royals struggled against every division. It didn't matter who they were playing. 
They did battle closely with some teams within their division, but still ended up under 500. Swing and ooh, look like out. Line drive that shatters the bat. Two men have been put away. Think about the Kansas City Royals and their uh, records against the White Sox, 9-9, nine and nine, even against the uh, Tigers. They ended up splitting the season. Well, I, you know, if you can get into a series where you can pitch Zach Greinke one of the three games in a three-game series and you have a chance to win that game, you know, all you have to do is win one more and you win a series. But, you know, this is what the Kansas City Royals have to build on for 2010. The fact that yet... Swung on, that is hit. They caught it! Oh! That was headed right for the pitcher. Good, quick reaction. He got it. Pitchers are taught once they release the ball, they become a fielder. He was in good position right there to be able to make the play and help himself. Quick half inning there. It's over. Five pitches. And coming up, we'll see the Royals. And here's Rick on Keel. Uh, coming into this game, he's got to have some confidence because he picked up two hits last time out. So... Got to be seeing the ball pretty well. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. This one towards Pierre. And he gets over and pulls it in for the out. And it's Jose Guillen at the plate. Well, John Danks is a left-handed pitcher, kind of in the mold of a Mark Burley. Left-handers, they both keep the ball down the zone. They pitch with movement. Danks fastball a little bit better. He can reach the low to mid. Swing, hot shot. Danks. So Guillen is set down. Certainly uh, for Danks, one of the problems is, is learning to stay out of that too fat part of the strike zone. Sometimes he just puts pitchers right down the middle and really doesn't have to because he's he's solid enough to keep the ball down low most of the time. Well, he really is, and he has such great mechanics, too. I mean, he and Mark Burley, they're very similar when you watch him pitch. If it was just a silhouette of him, you'd think that it could be either one of them on the mound that particular day. But he does give up a lot of home runs. Like you said, he needs to be able to find corners more. When he does, he'll be more consistent and a bigger winner. Strike three, swung out by David DeJesus, no contact. Good defensive half inning there, no hits allowed. No runs yet for Kansas City. Leading it off, Carlos Quinton. Right fielder, number 20, Carlos Quinton. He swings and nails a liner. And that one's down. That's the first hit we've seen. And he ends up at second. That's a double. But you can't ask for a better way to start the inning. A leadoff double. Now big things can happen. And Beckham's in the box. I don't know if you got a chance to see his last ball game, but he picked up two hits in that one. Swing the bat well. Swings and misses the slider. 0-1. Well, that's a pretty good pitch right there. He got that slider in the strike zone. He got the hitter out in front to swing early. Hit sharply towards the hole. Good offensive chance here. I tried to go down with that 0-1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Steve, it looked like he might have been guessing down there. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind in the count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate and he took advantage of it. And Quinton's home. So the rally here energized every new opportunity they take advantage of. AJ Brzezinski. Well, now after giving up three straight hits, the manager has to start thinking about getting somebody up in the pen. It's going to be Brzezinski. Some production being seen in this game early, and they've got a chance now to extend the lead. Well, you have to credit this lineup, Gary. Some quality at bats right now, and taking advantage of the opportunities, and now they have a lead. Well, we've got a moment to look back to last year's Chicago White Sox and see how they ranked. Sixth Number in home runs, sixth in stolen Mark bases, Dan. and they were in the top ten in team batting average with runners in scoring position, getting a lot of clutch base hits, and that's a great stat for a team that wants to win ball games. Mark Tian looking to knock in a run. He's gone 0 for 4 lifetime against Mesh. Swing and a miss on the cutter, 0-1.
There's a swing and a smash. Two down. And the runners will have to hold at first and second. And Mark Potse up. And one of the top ten averages right now. Two men on and two men out. Here it comes. That one misses. It gets away from the catcher. Swing and a miss by Kotze. Count knotted up. He's getting it done all season long, Gary, and a guy they're really looking to count on. Hit hard on the ground towards third. And they get the force at second that time. That'll do it. They get that first run of the ball game here in the second. Something to work on. The White Sox lead it one to nothing. Third in. Taking a count of the ball game, there's Ozzie Guillen. Number 30. He got what he needed out of his lineup that last time through. This lead now something he can try to protect if he can get some solid pitching. Avilas at the plate. There's a strike from Danks, now 0-1. And you can throw the ball down in the zone with that kind of movement. It can be very effective. Hit in the air to left center. And that one's going to drop in. That's their first hit. The plate, so Alex Gordon will come up. Well, the first thing you have to do if you want to score four. runs is get a base Alex hit. They Gordon. finally got that hit. Now let's see if they can bring him around. Right there in the top five in home runs. And he watches one that goes inside 1 0 count. At the belt, the 1 0. And Gordon with a swing and a miss. That is a strike. The count evened up. Now, teammates got to be feeling pretty good about him right now coming to the plate, knowing he's coming off of his last game and he hit one out of the ballpark, taking advantage of the pitcher being in trouble. Swing and a miss, strike three, Gordon out. Well, whatever the setup was that he wanted, he got it, and he was off balance at the plate. Well, a great sequence of pitches right there to keep the batter off balance, and a great approach by the pitcher. And Kendall's in the box. He had a respectable three for nine last year off the White Sox. First pitch is a cut fastball, high, 1-0. Well, good movement on the cutter there, but he's got to get the ball down in the zone. He can get hurt with hitters throwing it up there. He's up with it. The second for one. Over to first, he is safe. Almost a double play, not quite enough time. They get the lead runner at second base, but I think they would have liked to have gotten two right there. And Posednik's batting. Struck out swinging his last time up. The first pitch. Fastball just misses. 1-0. Now, if you got a chance to see the last game, you saw he seemed a little bit flustered at the plate, expanding the strike zone, striking out twice in that game. The 1-0 now. 1-0 delivery is a fastball in there, 1-1. Well, he couldn't have asked for a better pitch. He likes the ball down the middle like every hitter, and he got a fastball. you got to swing the bat. Boy, excellent movement to the cutter, and it's 1-2. and two. The one two on its way. Cutter strike three call. That'll do it in the inning. Now we see another good John Danks performance in that inning. Well, he continues to dominate through three innings of work. And it'll be the White Sox. The top of the order is due up next. Well, we'll uh, won't consider it extreme weather, but it is very cold here. Field conditions are okay. And it's Juan Pierre now. He's in the top echelon of hits right now.
And Pierre ready for the first pitch. Lined right at the second baseman. And it's through. Credit Pierre, a single. And so that brings Alexei Ramirez, Ramirez up. Shortstop. 0 for 1 thus far. Alexei Ramirez. No one out and a runner on first. And Ramirez settles in, headed for the middle. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. Well, the bottom line is that he's on base. But I tell you what, he's going to struggle mightily if he continues to swing at that pitch down in the zone, almost in the dirt. And here's Paul Canerco, one of the best batting averages in the league. Hit hard to second. And there's one. And that's two. A double play. That's the plate. Here's a left 4 6 3 on the double play. That's the way they teach you whether you're at second base or shortstop. One fluid motion, get it out of the glove and get rid of it. Base runner 90 feet away from Carlos Quinton, who's at the plate. He's got the best average in the division. First pitch to Quinton. Swung on, liner to right. Pierre scores. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. Well, he's getting the job done this year, no question about it. Such production, so consistent. Well, you see the pitch down in the zone a little bit, but he got a good piece of wood on it and drives it. What you like about that at bat is the discipline to keep the head in. Well, I'll tell you what, he changed locations, went down to the zone. It's a solid piece of hitting. Towards the middle, Mesh throws on to first in time to retire the side. They pick up one on three hits, strand a man. White Sox by two. And if you are just coming Kansas on board, Royals, Gary Thorne, Steve baseman, Phillips, John Cruck, as we bring you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. Diaspo at the plate and frequently walked. He's the most walked hitter in this division. Banks gets set and delivers. And it goes foul. Look, okay, this club, I mean, they, they need to be patient, and he is the guy that sets the tone. He works the count. Here's the pitch. Right on it, but he fouls it straight back. This one's grounded hard up the middle. Beckham. And Kaiaspo retired. Kansas City Wolves. First base. Number 16. And Butler's in the box. Billy Butler is the type of guy that the Kansas City Royals are going to build their offense around. He finally stepped up and, and had a breakthrough season for them. And if you're a rebuilding team, the last thing you want to do is find someone in the middle of your lineup to try to build the team around. They got that in Kansas City right now with Billy Butler. Out number two. And here's Rick on Keel. Two outs and nobody on. And he starts and Keel out. There's a strike from Danks, now 0 and 1. Into the fourth inning, clearly pitching dominating this lineup right now. Look, he's only given up one hit. And they just have not had quality at bats against him. He's making it look easy. That pitch was way too low, but he swung at it anyway. It's a strike. He delivers low, and it's one and two. But if you're going to miss, this is where you want to miss. Throw that breaking ball at the bottom of the strike zone. If the hitter swings and puts it in play, it's a ground ball out. out. 
Can't connect on that one, Rick and Keel. He's empty and he's gone. Three up, three down this half inning. The White Sox still ahead. And Alex Rios to lead off. Had an RBI single his last time at the plate. Alex Rios. And he starts Rios out. Strike one. Mesh got him to swing 0 and 1. Well, if you're going to be late on the fastball, you're going to have trouble hitting up here, and he's struggling right now. Line shot into center field, and he gets it down. He's two for two now. That's going to bring up A.J. Pierzynski. Well, a good start to this inning, but let's see if the guys behind him, after he starts out this inning with the single, can follow up and finish this inning off with some runs. Runner on first. Spotted by Kendall, and this is bounced foul to the left side. Mesh with a delivery. Hot shot towards the hole. Too late, and he is safe at second. Safe at second, not able to make that play. And that'll bring Marti into the play. The best hitters in the game use the whole field. You have to be able to go the other way. Even when the pitch is over the heart of the plate, that's what he does right there. Guys prolong their career up the middle. Mercy, that is right at the pitcher. And you got to hope he's all right. Back to first, not in time. Not quick enough on the relay. But a quick recovery that time gets the out. Mark Dolce. It's Mark Kotze in the box now. In the top ten and hits. Runners at first and third, one away. Here's the first pitch to Kotze. Swings and grounds this one foul wide of third. Oh and one mesh kicks and delivers. There's a swing line drive center field. And that one to fall in and the run will score. Boy this lineup they are hot right now the chances they are productive. Number six. One. Pierre. Well, you know, Gary, I tell you what, most major league hitters would not even offer it that pitch. But this guy's one of those rare guys that absolutely loves that pitch down and in. That's why he got that hit. He deals. Hit sharply towards the hole. There's one. Over to first and safe. Very close play. They will not get the double play. Well, quick release by the third baseman. They get the lead runner at second, just not able to turn the double play. And Ramirez settles in first pitch. Now swing and a shot towards second. And that will bring a run in. Now coming to bat. A oh, perfect situational hitting. This is exactly the time you want to go the other way. And what we're talking about is taking the ball where it's pitched. It's outside. Go the other way. RBI chance goes to Paul Canerco. And they've not had to struggle here at the plate in this game. They just keep building on this lead. Uh, that last hit puts a little bit more daylight in this lead right now, Gary. They keep tacking on early. Two down. Runners at first and second. And he starts Canerco. A hit up the middle. Oh, my. He manages to get the glove on that. Talk about reflexes. This is the pitcher's worst nightmare. You throw the pitch and it comes right back at you. Sometimes it's just self-defense. He got the glove up and made the out. So they scratch across two runs. Three hits and two left on. The White Sox four run lead. Middle of the lineup due up. And it's Jose Guillen. Designated hitter number 11, Jose Guillen. First pitch, AB begins to Guillen. That pitch is not going to be in there from Danks. 
Well, good movement on the cutter there, but he's got to get the ball down in the zone. He can get hurt with hitters throwing it up there. Swung on, grounded towards the hole. Safe at first base. They got a base runner. And that's going to bring David DeJesus up. Well, as a pitcher, there's absolutely nothing you can do about this. You hate these type of hits, but he makes a great pitch. The ball just hit in an absolute perfect spot where no one can get to it in time to beat him on the throw to first. Ball! Starts him off with a cut fastball inside. 1-0. Big time offensive production last game out there. Three RBIs in that one. And I think some real momentum coming into this game. And he grabs this one. That's one out. Now over to first and safe at first. Close play. Not quite enough time to get him. Avila's at the plate. He went three for 18 last year against the White Sox. One out. Runner on at first. Danks gets set and delivers. And he watches a cut fastball to start the at bat for strike one. Even with the late movement on the cut fastball, you don't want to throw it up in the zone because a hitter can fight it off and muscle it over the infielders. The throw, no luck beating him to second. He is in there. Swinging and a miss, and it's now one and two. Well, he throws his cut fastball hard, and it has that good movement. He still gets that up in the zone, was oh. able to blow it by him at the letters. And it remains one and two. Swing, hot shot. And Ramirez feels the ball in time for the up. He might have had a shot of getting the runner at third base, but much safer. Make the second out of the inning, get the out at first, and try to retire the next guy. Base runners 90 away. Alex Gordon at the plate. What a year for him. Top five in homers. Curveball misses badly, 1 0. Just a solid offensive player, day in and day out, and a guy that uh, really can deliver for this offense. Ball two. That pitch is not going to be in there from Danks. But if you're going to miss, this is where you want to miss. Throw that breaking ball at the bottom of the strike zone. If the hitter swings and puts it in play, it's a ground ball out. Here's the 2-1. There's a called strike of the letters, and it's 2-2 two two now. Even with the late movement on the cut fastball, you don't want to throw it up in the zone because a hitter can fight it off and muscle it over the infield. The slider swung out and missed. Struck him out. Side gone. John Danks comes off the mound. He's got seven Ks in this game. And it'll be the White Sox. Welcome to those of you just tuning in. 2K Sports, Major League Baseball. This is Gary Thorne along with Steve Phillips and John Crook. Leading it off, Carlos Quinton. Now if you saw his last game, you got a chance to see that he swung the bat well in that one, picking up a couple of knocks. First pitch to Quinton. Strike one. Mesh got him to swing 0 and 1. You know, I'd actually sit on this guy's curveball. It's an exceptional pitch, but it's his go to pitch. You can predict when he's going to throw it, and maybe you're going to have a shot. Stops at second. Two back. We talked about a guy who's swinging a pretty hot bat right now. His third hit of this ball game, and it comes with nobody out in the inning. Base runner at second with nobody out. 
And here's the first one. Strike one. Strike one. Mesh got him to swing 0-1. Well, right there, you can just tell that the hitter was absolutely fooled on that pitch. Nothing you can do. You try to reach out and just put it in play, but he swung through it. And that one swung on and missed by Gordon Beckham. You know, what I like about this is on 0-2, he didn't mess around. He didn't try to nibble to get him chase off the plate. He goes right at him and just gets the strikeout. One out, and Alex Rios at the plate. And the 2009 season was a big disappointment for Alex Rios, starting out with the Toronto. Hit hard to second. The last ball, so Rios is set down. Well, he gets the man over to third base, but with two outs now, it doesn't help much, but at least 90 feet closer to scoring. It's going to be Krasinski. Lifetime, 233 hitter off Gilmesh. Mesh with a delivery. Swings at that breaking ball, but misses. It's 0-1. Swung on and hit. This one towards on Keel. And he's there to retire the side. They pick up no runs on a hit. Stranding man at third base. White Sox four. Kansas City nothing. End of the order is going to try and kick it off offensively. And Kendall's in the box. He'll get things started off as we go to the sixth. Jason Kendall. First pitch on the way. Swings and misses. The good change right there. On one. No balls. One strike. Here's Danks. Straight away left. This one towards Pierre. He gets it in, puts it away, shallow left. Left fielder, number 22. And Posednik's batting. He's the best base dealer right now in the division. One out, nobody on. And here's the first one. There's a strike from Danks, now 0-1. He's the guy on this team that they go to. If they need the stolen base, he's the man. Now Przinski sets up, and he lays it down. He'll try to beat it out, and that one is foul. foul. And another foul ball. But when a pitcher throws a pitch out there 0-2, you're expecting him to get a ground out or a strikeout, but this guy just reaches out, puts it in play, defensive swing to keep this thing going. Struck him out. That's number eight in the game. Look at the big break on that pitch. That's huge. At 82 miles per hour, it's a tough pitch. Well, this is a pitch right there that you just have to take a bigger hack at right there. He just swung through it. Batting is all about rhythm, and he appeared to be off right there. John, he did. He had, his, uh, he had the timing of the hitter completely off. Kiaspo at the plate. Looking at the numbers from last year, a really good 315 against the White Sox. There's a strike from Danks, now 0-1. And, and you can throw the ball down in the zone with that kind of movement. It can be very effective. And here's the delivery. 0-1 pitch is a cut fastball. Swung on and missed, 0-2. And, Wanted to get him fishing, but he misses, 1-2. and two. Swing and a foul straight back. You're Struck out. him out. And with that, here in the sixth inning, it's over. The shutout's on. Steve, you can just tell by looking at it, he's thinking about it. Uh, Garrett, he's bringing it today, no question about it. And I tell you, the offense has to look out because he's gaining confidence. So they're shut down again. That's six shutout innings so far. No runs yet for Kansas City. 
Leadoff batter will get a shot at it later on in this inning. And here's Mark Tian leading it off. Third number 24, Mark Tian. First one to Tian. Here's the pitch. Swing and a hot shot. Well, sometimes it's about the fundamentals. Sometimes, though, it's about a flare from the drive. Well, good, solid, fundamental, flary baseball, huh? And here's Mark Kotze. He singled in his last at bat. Base is empty with one away. Here's a swing and a line drive. And it gets down. That's hit number two, making good contact. So Juan Pierre will come up. Well, he waited for that one to get deep in the zone, and he put a good swing on it. Now with one out, let's see if they try to move him along. And one of the league's most prolific hitters in the top five. And Pierre ready for the first pitch. That's it foul by Pierre. Well, one of the offensive leaders in the game this year, and obviously a guy who's getting the job done for this offense and somebody they've really come to rely upon. Strike two. Pierre now has got to be careful, but a good punch hitter. Well, you got to like that pitch, that cut fastball up and away from the hitter. Awfully tough to hit it with that kind of movement. Swing and a miss on the cutter that time. Two down. Uh, it seemed like he made it easy. Three pitches, big strikeout. Can't get rid of a guy any quicker than that. Only took three and he's gone. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. His lifetime average, 262 against the Royals. That swung on and flied to right. That's caught. Side is retired. No runs at a base hit. They leave one man on at first. And coming up, we'll see the Royals. And the three hole will be coming right up. And it's Billy Butler to lead it off. First baseman, number 16, Billy Butler. Danks gets set and delivers. First pitch is a changeup. Looked at 0 and 1. Deep into the ball game, only two hits for this offense, and clearly they've been overmatched, Gary, in this one. And you know they're going to have to try something. Try to lay down a bunt. Try to see if you can't wait them out, force them to throw more pitches, or get them out of the ball game. You're Strikes out. him out. We have said it more than once today, but he continues to look extremely sharp, Steve. He's so locked in. You, you wonder how long he can keep it going. I haven't seen anybody pitch like this in a long time. And here's Rick on Keel. Struck out swinging last time. And he starts and Keel out. Danks gets him to swing and miss for a strike. Well, this one here was no doubt about it. The late break on that slider. I mean, what a devastating pitch, and the hitter just couldn't catch up. A swing line to left center. And he'll take an extra base on this one. It's rolling towards the wall. On Keel towards third base. And he's now in at second the with a double. One up. Well, this pitch right here catches way too much of the plate, and he absolutely demolishes it. Let's see what they want to do here with one out and a base open. And it's Jose Guillen at the plate. One for two in the ballgame. One out with a runner at second. First pitch, A.B. begins to Guillen. Danks gets him to swing and miss for a strike. With two strikes on him now, Guillen needs to protect that zone. Not exactly where he wants to throw this curveball, but it locked the hitter up. He just froze You're and out. couldn't deliver. Rings him up. Man, he has just mastered this offense in this ball game, and no signs he's letting up. Well, he's been sharp all game long, but you just hope going through the order for the third time and the fourth time, guys don't start picking up on the tendencies. The pitch. First pitch is a slider in there on one. This is where you want to go with the breaking ball to the outside corner. Paint the black. Get the call. The hitter gave up on it. He got the pitch he wanted. And that's a strike. The Jesus has now got to guard the plate. 
Strike three. Man, oh man, is he on a roll on the mound, Steve. You can tell by his eyes, he's completely locked in right now in absolute control. So they can't figure anything out. And through seven, they remain without a run. The White Sox still on top. Paul Canerco to lead it off. Hasn't had much success yet in this game. He's hoping to get something this time. Paul Canerco. Mesh with a delivery. That's on that off-speed pitch, but can't connect 0-1. That's it foul by Canerco. Swung on, line to right field. That's going to bring Carlos Quinton up. He tries to sneak one down and in to get the strike three call, but he fights it off. Outstanding job at the plate. And that is so demoralizing for a pitcher. You work so hard to get ahead in the count, and then you give up a base hit. First pitch to Quinton. Hit up the middle. And it gets down. Hit after hit. They just keep on coming. He's got four today. Good offensive chance here. Well, they just can't figure out a way to get this guy out. That's now four hits for him in this game. And Beckham's in the box. He was a strikeout victim last time through the lineup. Swinging and a miss, and he falls behind on the count 0-1. Well, that fastball right there, he just blew it by him. Mesh with a delivery. This one's grounded wow. near third. Foul. Oh. And he fouls off another one. Well, the last thing you want to do in this situation is strike out. But with an 0-2 count, your chances are pretty good that you will strike out. But this defensive approach will keep him alive. Good cutter. Swung on and missed for the first out. This one's right down the middle. He just swung and missed at it. Check his bat for a hole. Alex Rios. And he starts Rios out. Strike one. Mesh got him to swing 0 1. He just rears back and throws this one with a little something extra on it. No chance of putting it in play. Well hit towards the middle and through for a base hit. He's now three for four. Good day. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. Well, the guy that just continues to swing the bat well in this ball game. Three hits right now so far. And it comes with one out in the inning. Can it start a rally? And out on the mound, we've got Juan Cruz. He's been brought in to take over for the Royals. Hot shot towards the hole. And Canerco will score. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. Number 24, Mark Keane. Well, that's hit number 15 and then for that one. And boy, you get 15 hits in a game. The manager can just sit back and relax and watch his team work. And here's Martinez. Boy, this lineup is just pushing. Swinging a shot down the left field line. And it gets down as Quentin crosses the plate. And Rios comes across to score. And he'll stop at second base. That'll be a two-run double. Designated hitter. Number 30. Mark Godsey. Well, this is a guy right here that was made to hit fastballs, and that's what he looks for, and that's what he got right there. Put a good swing on it. He knew what to do with it for that double. And it's Mark Godsey in the box now. Well, definitely not an overstatement to say this offense may not be stoppable today. But Gary, I mean, with that hit right there, I mean, they're just pouring gasoline on the fire right now. Somebody's got to have a hose. And Butler gloves that one. And the runners have to stay put, second and third. Here's Juan Pierre looking to bring that runner in. 
In 13 yeah. career at bats, five hits off one Cruz. Now Kendall spots the pitch. Slider swung on and missed. 0 and 1. What a great pitch right there by the pitcher. The hitter gets out there. He's thinking it's a fastball. And all of a sudden he sees that movement on that slider. And he hesitates for just that brief second to swing late. Lined up the middle. And in there the White Sox will score. Now up to the plate. Pitcher's count. Hitter's pitch. That's an 0-2 count, a little too aggressive on the pitcher's part coming into the strike zone. Good piece of hitting. The pitch. Here's one. Hit very well deep. On Keel to field this one. And there's the third up. They pound out six hits in the inning and push across four runs as well. White Sox continue to run away with this ball game. Latter third of the lineup coming up. Avila set the plate. One for two in the ball game. Number 30, Mike Avila. First pitch on the way. Swing and a soft liner to the right. Out into right field. That'll be a single. So Alex Gordon will come up. Well, good piece of hitting right there. And anytime you get your first hitter of the inning on base, it could set up the potential for a big inning. First pitch on the way to Gordon. Hit sharply towards the hole. One away now. And now we've got one down here in this eighth inning of a shutout ball game. Now he's just putting on a show out there right now, Gary. One out, a runner on at second base. Doesn't make contact on that dank pitch. Okay, there are so many different ways to get hitters out. Velocity, the change in velocity, deception, and movement. Well, his changeup gives you all of those. Two down now, and you got to be thinking ahead just a little bit. He doesn't look like he's getting tired. It's still a shutout. Well, at this point, adrenaline just takes over. He's focused, determined. He's ignoring any fatigue. Two outs and a runner on second. Danks gets set and delivers. Fastball taken high, 1-0. Uh, holding them scoreless so far in this one and only allowed four hits Gary and I think a real credit to what he's been able to do up now here's a grounder towards the hole he's out at first base nice play on the cover uh, that's a well executed play right there Gary he hustled over got the first base and touched the bag thought he might have had a strike out there but he's involved in the out anyway and so a good inning for John Danks he has pushed his strikeout totals into double digits now time for the White Sox. This is their chance in the home half of the eighth. And there's the familiar face of the manager, Trey Hilmer. The thoughts of the manager, one can only speculate, but at this point, you've got to believe he's, he's got some words for that next practice. And it's Paul Canerco now. And he starts Canerco out. Back up the middle. And Canerco's got himself a single. Now That's going to bring Carlos Quinton up. Well, a great job right there by the first hitter in this inning to get on base. And you know, a lot of big innings are started with that first guy getting on. And you have one or two big innings in a game, and that can be the difference in the outcome. First pitch to Quinton. And that's by him 0 and 1. Well, you have to be ready for something hard, and this guy wasn't anticipating it. That's why he was late on that two seam fastball. Smash towards the hole. Now 
Well, and that is hit number five in this ball game for him. Have a day, young man. And Beckham's in the box. Struck out swinging last time. No one out yet. Runners at first and second. And the first pitch. Catcher can't control it. Pitch on the way. Swung on, liner to right. One down. And that will keep the runners. They have to stay at first and second. Now batting for the Chicago White Sox. One out. And Alex Rios at the plate. Alex Only Rios. one career at bat. That's a one off Cruz. Here's the pitch. That one swung on its line. And the throw. And he's safe in there at first. We talk about a guy who's just wearing out the opposition. That's a four hit day for him. He is locked in. Bases are loaded here with only one away. Here's the first pitch. Circle change cut on and missed 0 and 1. Well, he clearly fooled him right there. He had him thinking fastball and he pulled the string on it. Got him to swing right through it. Swing and a miss. Well, a lot of times movement will fool a hitter, but it looked like right here the velocity on that pitch was what caused him to swing and miss and be late. Swing and a miss on the fastball, second out in the inning. Well, he's up in the mid 90s now, so pretty good velocity, but not much break on it. Well, he just looked overpowered on those two fastballs. John thought the uh, timing that time just didn't seem to be there in the at bat. Well, and a, and a strikeout like that will give the pitcher a lot of confidence. First one to tee in. Here's the pitch. That one swung on, hit in the air deep to left field. And that's the third out. That'll do it. So they load the bases on the strength of three base hits, but no runs. The White Sox eight, Kansas City nothing. Isaac Ian taking a look at you right there. He has to be very pleased right now riding this one up. Diaspo at the plate. He'll start us out here in the last inning of regulation. Danks gets set and delivers. Let's that breaking ball go outside for ball one. Well, this offense has just been shut down in this one. I mean, they've left one runner on base the entire game. We're in the ninth inning here. They just have not had any real opportunities. Hit on the ground, up the middle. Fielded by Ramirez. And Kiaspo retired. Pressure continues to mount. Not a bad way to start the last inning. We've got a shutout going. You want to get the first guy. He's going to need every bit of that defensive support in the end. Base is empty, one out. First pitch to him. Danks gets him to swing and miss for a strike. And that's a strike. Billy Butler's going to have to be in a defensive mode in this at bat. him out and that's going to leave him one away from a shutout. Now so close Gary. One more out and he's got it. You know he's got to be exhausted on the mound. He's been out there for a long time. But Gary he delivers a change up on this one. And here's Rick on Keel. We'll try it again here. Just one for three thus far. And he starts and Keel out. That pitch is not going to be in there from Danks. A 1 0 pitch. Strike one. one ball, one strike. Yeah. 
One one on the way. Good time to call for that changeup. One and two. He deals. Swing and a miss, and the ball game is over, and he does it. What a performance he has pitched. The shutout. Those are not easily come by. I'll tell you, what an effort from the big guy. For a while, I thought he was going to run out of gas, but he just kept on battling. I admire his drive and determination. Well, it went a great one here today, Gary, and it's all because of the pitching. Outstanding pitching really leading them to victory. Now we'd like to grant the Pepsi Clutch Performance Award now. Definitely a difference maker in this one, John Danks. Well, you couldn't have asked for a more dominant display on the mound than what we saw today. He was mixing his pitches while changing speeds, but the thing you noticed, he didn't throw any pitches over the center of the plate. That's what made it so special. And when he needed it, he could get back and reach back and get that little bit extra when he needed that big out. Made it look easy out there today, Gary. And we got to see a terrific performance out of their starter. And he was able to ride that one on to victory. Well, an outstanding effort. He had everything working today. The good stuff and location to shut down the opponent. Thanks for being with us today. We hope you've enjoyed 2K Sports Major League Baseball. We wrap it up. I'm Gary Thorne with John Crux, Steve Phillips, and our 2K Sports crew. We'll see you soon.